Hi and welcome to this Dreinschlag video. I'm Bernard, this is Gedi, and this is Gregor, uh, who's actually not needed today. So, we've been receiving a lot of questions in the comments and today we've prepared a special video for you where we are going to answer some of the most frequent ones. Enjoy! So, one question we get asked a lot is, what about left-handed fences? Are there any specific techniques or variations of techniques for left-handed fences? And one part of the answer to the question is that in the medieval source materials there is no specific mention of left-handed fences or techniques for left-handed people. However, on a more pragmatic note, uh, it's actually a pretty easy um, question to answer. So, you have your left hand, you place it on the sword and you take your... no, sorry, the other way around actually. You have your right hand, you place it on the sword and you have the left... no, that's not right. Um, you, have, you have two hands, right? We can all agree on that. You have two hands and um, you use both hands. No, you have you are a mirror. No, you are not a mirror. Sorry, that's. Um, um, um. Yes. Are you left handed? Not exactly. Hmm. Okay, so if you're left handed fencer like I am, all you have to do is basically mirror the directions in our uh, instructions. So, for example, for our first video, the Oberhaupt, grab the sword with the left hand and need a cross guard. Your right hand goes to the pommel and you have to change your stance so that your right foot is in front and the left foot follows. And the rest goes like uh, in our video. Well, and that's basically it. Another frequent question is, what about women? What about girls? Can they do historical European martial arts and can they do long sword fencing? Well, it's an important question, I think. and. Well, if you are a woman, if you're a girl, then it's... Are you a woman? No. Are you a woman? No. Uh, well, if you can lift this, which is actually one and a half kilos, you can lift a sword as well. See? Anyone can fence. Nothing to it. Another question is, why do you guys never take the legs in your videos? Well, actually, the legs can be a valid target in some situations, in certain situations, but in most situations, it's actually dangerous to go for the legs, and we wouldn't advise doing it. This can be visualized thus. So, right now, I was going for his leg, but I didn't reach it. But I'm still ended up within his reach, and he can hit me on the head while well, I'm just. I achieve nothing here. Which probably answers the question. So, on to the next question, which is Do you parry an attack with a flat or with the edge of your blade? Well, actually, depending on context and situation, both can be true. But for this explanation to make sense, I'm actually going to need, well, Let's see, two sharp blades and maybe Gregor back. Oh, thanks, mate. <coughs> Later. So, as I was saying, basically there are two kinds of situation. The first kind, which is the more frequent one actually, is a situation where you want to gain control over your opponent's blade. You can do this with a sharp blade by actually parrying with the edge. So what happens is um, that edge is going to bite into edge, blades are going to lock up for a brief moment, allowing you to gain control and mani manipulate your opponent's blade. Like this. Another kind of situation is a situation where I actually want my opponent's blade to slide off my blade as quickly and smoothly as possible. Could be something like this. So there you have it, two kinds of pairing of catching your opponent's blade, depending on the situation and context. There are two things I would like to add to this. The first point is, we are used to handling sharp swords. Most of you probably are not, so please don't try this at home, unless you really are knowing what you're doing. The second point is, um, a follow-up question we receive all the time, isn't catching your opponent's blade with your edge going to destroy your blade? time? 
Well, definitely yes. However, swords, historically seen, were tools, and tools obviously are subject to wear and tear. So yes, you're going to get mixed scratches and dents, and then eventually you have to throw it away and get a new blade. So, on to the next question, which is, what kind of sources do you guys use? Well, at Dreinschlag we train in a wide variety of weapons, so obviously we use a wide variety of sources. But, regarding longsword, for a long time our main source has been uh, the fencing manual written by Peter von Danzig, which dates from about mid-15th century. Now, if you are looking for texts to study, um, you have to be careful to, um, to discern between translations uh, transcriptions and interpretations. Um, medieval German is hard to understand even for German native speakers, so if you are not a German native speaker, you will probably keep your hands off a pure transcription and you want to stick with translation and interpretation. Actually, a good source for you to start is www.wichtenauer.com. You can find um, transcriptions as well as English translations there. And for our German speaking friends, check out um, the Hamburgian Group's Hammerbox site. You can find lots of material there. So, any more questions? What's that? Do we have an Instagram channel? Oh, yes. I'm glad you asked. Actually, we do. So, definitely please go and check it out.